Uh, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, okay. So um, today uh, I'm going to start MRCS OSCE station. So one station from knowledge part and another station from skill part. So from knowledge part, I would like to start from head and neck. Okay. So uh, who is going to participate for knowledge part? I don't mind, I'll participate. Okay. For skill part, um, the station will be if anyone interested, just um, uh, write down in the chat box, okay? Okay, so can you please open your video uh, so that I can recognize you and I can um, start? Okay, that's fine, that's fine. So can you please introduce yourself? I can't hear you. Can you please unmute your mic? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Thanks. So I'm Dr. Mikhail Merchant. I completed my MRCS part A in uh, last year in, in May. Okay. And, uh, currently, I just completed my master's in laparoscopic surgery at Baths in London. Okay, that's fine. And I'm planning to give my part B in the next two months. Okay, so the station is from head and neck portion. So I'm going to put a timer as um, this exam is within time limit and I'll create some simulated pressure so that um, you can you can get some exam environment. Is that okay? Okay, that's fine. Fine. I'm going for you. So in real exam, the um, total time for MRCS of ski knowledge part is 10 minutes. So one minute for candidate instruction and nine minutes for question answer session. So I'm just going answer session. As you know, we are going to do MRCS of ski knowledge part head and neck portion. Is that okay? Yep. Okay, so here we go. Can you see the timer? Yes. So the my first question is, um, the stem. Um, wait a bit. Just, I need to give some pause. Okay, I'm start my timer again. Can you see the timer? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Can you able to see the picture? Yeah. So my first question is, can you please identify strap muscle from here? 
Okay. Um, thirty one is the sternohyoid. Okay, that's fine. Two thirty two is sternothyroid. Um, thirty four is omohyoid. And I think. Uh, 30, I mean, four is. 30, is it? Is it? Uh, is it Superior belly or inferior belly or something like that. Thirty-four. Thirty-four is uh, the superior belly of omoyoid. Okay, that's fine. That's Thirty-eight, fine. I think, is uh, thyroid. Thirty-eight, excellent. So, can you please tell me the knob supply of the strap muscles? Um. Strap muscles are supplied by ansa cervicalis. Supply of strap muscles. By ansa cervicalis, which is C1 to C3, except the thyroid, which is supplied by the by C1. Excellent. So, can you please tell me the action of the muscles? Um, strap muscles uh, lead to depression of the hyoid bone and larynx when uh, up the persons during speaking and swallowing uh, actions okay the next picture should be it. so can you please identify spinal accessory now from here mm. is it 16 one minute uh, 16 um okay so the next question is um, can you please uh, tell me the supplies of the spinal accessory nerve uh it supplies the trapezius muscle and the sternocleidomastoid okay can you please tell me the anatomy of the spinal accessory nerve um it transverses through the posterior triangle of neck hmm. Extending from um, superior one superior one third and uh, inferior two third junction of sternocleidomastoid to the um, in superior two third and uh, inferior one third junction of trapezius muscle. Okay, from this picture, uh, can you see the picture? Yes. Uh, can you identify the great auricular nerve and the supply area? I think uh, 25 is great auricular. And the, the supply area? Um, supplies the... It supplies the mandibular region. It supplies the parotid region. And... Inferior one, th uh, inferior half of the auricle of here. Okay, can you please tell me the boundaries of anterior triangle? Um, posteriorly is anterior edge of sternocleidomastoid. Um, superiorly is the lower border of ma mandible, and anteriorly is the midline of neck. What are the contents of anterior triangle? Um, so it's divided in different triangles. So strap muscles in the muscular triangle, then uh, carotid sheath, which contains your common carotid, uh, internal jugular vein, and vagus nerve. And it contains a submandibular gland, submandibular lymph nodes. And... Um, I think that's it. That's all I remember. And strap muscles, yeah. Okay. So can you please tell me the um, nap supply of diagastric muscle? Uh, diagastric has uh, two bellies. Mm -hmm. And anterior belly. So anterior belly, I think, is um, myeloid nerve. And posterior belly is um, facial nerve. Okay, that's fine. So... Can you please tell me the boundaries of uh, posterior triangle? Posterior triangle is uh, anterior boundary is posterior border of sternocleidomastoid. 
posterior boundary is anterior border of trapezius muscle and uh, base is middle third of i think clavicle okay so can you identify external carotid artery here can you please tell me the number it's it's 11 11 great so can you please tell me the course uh, as well as branches of external carotid artery okay uh, external carotid artery starts from the bifurcation of common carotid at uh, level of thyroid cartilage uh, C4 and it it travels upward superiorly and it ends in the parotid gland giving two branches the superficial superficial temporal artery and the maxillary artery and the branches branches are um, it's called anterior posterior and one deep branch. Um, so deep branch is accessory pharyngeal. And uh, anteriorly is lingual artery, facial artery, and uh, superior thyroid. And posteriorly is um, occipital and uh, posterior auricular artery. Sorry, posterior? Or, uh, sorry. Post posterior auricular artery. Okay. So, um, can you please tell me the nerve passing in the external cavity artery between the artery? Hypoglossal. Hypoglossal. No. Okay. So, what is carotid body? Um, carotid body is uh, the structure located just posterior to the bifurcation of common carotid artery. And uh, it contains uh, chemoreceptors which are sensitive to change in uh, pH. Okay, so what is carotid sinus? Carotid sinus is a structure which is located just superior to ca common carotid artery bifurcation and uh, at, uh, I think, superior border of thyroid cartilage. And it contains baroreceptors which are responsible for change in, uh, which, which react to change in blood pressure. Okay. Can you please tell me the number for thyroid gland? Here, yeah. 20, 22. Okay. Is 22 represent is much or lobe? Yeah, it's uh, left and right lobe. By lobe, then, so the two lobes, 22. Okay. So, okay. isthmus is, I think, 20 is the isthmus of the thyroid gland. Okay, can you please tell me the artery supply of the thyroid gland? Um, superior thyroid artery, uh, inferior thyroid artery, and in 10% population, there's thyroidema artery. Um, superior thyroid artery from uh, external external uh, carotid, inferior thyroid artery from uh, thyrocervical trunk, and thyroidema from uh, brachiocephalic. Okay, tell me the venous drainage of thyroid gland. Uh, Pretracheal uh, lymph nodes, then uh, uh, pre. Venous drainage. Oh, yes, yeah, so, sorry. Uh, I thought uh, it's lymphatic. Uh, venous drainage is a superior and middle thyroid vein and inferior thyroid vein. Coming from? A superior thyroid vein coming from. Uh, external jugular uh, going into draining into external jugular and uh, inferior thyroid draining into the brachiocephalic external internal sorry uh mr Michael, your time is over but i'm going to ask the uh, rest of the question okay um uh, can you please tell me the embryology of thyroid gland um it develops from the foramen cecum and it develops and uh, it grows anteriorly and uh, turns around the level of hyoid bone. Okay, that's okay. fine. So, um, can you please tell me the level of thyroid cartilage? C4. Mm, that. So, why thyroid moves up with deglutition? 
um so thyroid is attached to the baris ligament which is your uh, pretracheal fascia which is connected to the thyroid cartilage which in turn connects to hyoid bone so whenever the patient uh, swallows there's movement of the hyoid bone which through this connection moves the thyroid along the swallowing direction tell me the commonly injured nerve during thyroidectomy um uh, there's external laryngeal nerve recurrent laryngeal nerve and uh, cervical okay. hepatic chain what types of uh, thyroid cancer uh, uh, may spread by lymphatic route papillary papillary thyroid cancer okay the cell origin for medullary carcinoma what types of cell you know it's a uh, parafollicular c cells okay what are the late complication of thyroidectomy uh post operative um hypocalcemia and uh, hypothyroidism uh can you please tell me the location of parathyroid gland it's uh, located posterior to the thyroid gland at, at level of uh, c4 c5 depending on the superior inferior parathyroids the hormone secretion by parathyroid gland uh, pth parathyroidone embryology embryology of parathyroid gland mm. so parathyroid gland it has two parts superior and inferior parathyroids um, so superior parathyroids develop from fourth brachial arch with thymus no sorry uh, inferior parathyroid develops from uh, third brachial arch with thymus and superior parathyroid from fourth brachial arch Okay, what are the blood supply parathyroid gland? Inferior thyroid artery. Okay. Patient. So, um, the feedback, um, the verbal feedback are, so you should improve your identification from the picture. So, you should go through the picture again and again because you fail to recognize um, sternocleidomastoid, uh, spinal accessory nerve, as well as, um, the, yes, you, you did a uh, uh, good uh, recognition of strap muscle, but you should be more, more accurate for identification. That's first point. The second point is, uh, uh, don't go for hesitation so it's a time game so within time limit you have to answer lots of questions and because you know nowadays they ask more than 15 questions sometimes in any station they may ask 20 questions so each question carry one mark so you have to score at least 16 to seek you you it's quite straightforward okay you should you should uh, be very straightforward and um overall uh, you have good knowledge uh, regarding head and neck i think uh, if you revise uh, us for several times um uh it's better and you should be revised at least three or four times for head and neck and um, practice again and again and then come back for another mock hopefully um uh, it'll get better perfect thank you uh, i'll send you the checklist as well as um, uh, the written feedback to your mail okay okay thank you thank you sir okay so anyone interested for skill part for urinary catheterization rush me Um, do you interested for urinary catheterization station? I mean, how do I do it? Yes, yes. Just you tell uh, me the how do you do it. I, I'll, I, I'll, 
I'll show you a scenario so that uh, you can you can understand. Uh, wait a second. So the scenario is. Hmm. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. So this is just go. Okay. Okay. So, do you want to start? All right. I'll try doing it. Yes. Yes. Please. Please start. Uh, good morning. So, are you the patient? Yes. Yes, okay. I'm the patient. Okay. Good morning. I'm Dr. Rasmi, one of the surgical candidates. So could I please confirm your name and age? Yes, my name is Peter. My age is 74. Um, I'm sorry, Peter, but that there is Robert in the station. So could I please confirm it again with your badge tag? Do you have any ID tag? Yes, please. Can You, uh, you can check uh, in my wrist. Yeah. Yeah. So is your name Robert? Yes. Okay. Hello, Robert. So Hi. I have uh, I have received the information saying that you haven't been passing urine since eight hours. So for that's, which... That's too, too, too much painful, you know. Oh, my God. I'm sorry about that. So do you have... Um, I mean, do you want me to uh, give you any painkillers for it? Or is it fine? No, it's okay. It's, it's fine, doctor. Okay, so uh, Robert, uh, so today I'm going to insert a urine pipe in front passage, uh, okay. so which involves me like applying um, lignocaine jelly, which is nothing but an anesthesia. So it, it numbs you at that region, and then I'm going to insert okay. it, uh, which helps you in passing the urine. So while I'm doing okay. it, you may experience a little bit of pain and uh, irritation uh, but it would be completely fine after the procedure so before i move on uh, could i please check if you have any allergies to the rubber no no doctor okay uh, do you have any fractures or do you have any complaint of bleeding from coming from your front passage no doctor okay okay i'm gonna start now doing it so these are two areas. Um, this is a sterile area and a non-sterile area field. And uh, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna read out the expiry date and the manufacturing date, and then um, keep the equipments ready, mm -hmm. and then take a gauze piece. Firstly, mm -hmm. put a uh, clean the penile uh, in the print mm -hmm. uh, from. So I'll be using four gauze pieces in total. I'll uh, clean mm -hmm. it from the, um, I mean, inferior to superior and throw it up. Then uh, I'm going to um, insert the lignocaine jelly and then wait for 30 seconds to, to um, act the numbing agent and then insert the urine pipe. And then... Uh, Put the urine back, connect it, and check if the urine is coming up. I'm sorry. Uh, before that, I'm going to uh, inflate the balloon. And then... Okay. If urine not coming up? Uh, then I would do a massage, suprapubic massage. Mm -hmm. And even send for the x-ray to find out if there is any abnormality inside. Okay, urine coming out. What should you do next? Urine is not coming up. No, urine is coming out now. What should you do? So I'll give the uh, leaflet to the patient. If it is an outpatient, I'll give giving the leaflet about the uh, what to do after going home and how to drain the bag and all the steps. If there, if he is an inpatient, then uh, I would ask him to go back to the ward. 
Okay, so do you want to do anything else? Oh, yeah, I would, uh, before this, I would like to document uh, all this procedure and take a sign from the patient. Yeah. Okay, so if no urine coming out when you inserted the catheter, mm -hmm. uh, what would be the possible cause? Uh, it could be the bladder injury. Mm -hmm. Or, or then, there could be any obstruction near the passage. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Or if it is a false catheterization, so even that could be the possibility. Yeah. Okay. Or a fracture. Okay, what should you do at this moment? Um, uh, if the urine doesn't come out? Yes. Uh, I would do a suprapubic massage. Then... Uh, uh, I would again check if the urine catheter is properly inserted by uh, deflating and inflating the balloon. Yeah. Mm. And the bladder is empty on bladder scan and the bladder washout suggests the catheter is not in correct place. What investigation would you order? Bladder, I mean, the catheter is not in correct place. The bladder is empty. The, after scanning, bladder is empty and bladder mm -hmm. wash out so that catheter is in the correct place. What investigation you would order? Uh, I would ask I would ask the patient to um, drink water and come back again. Because the bladder is empty, so that is why the urine isn't coming out. Okay, you didn't. You did an ultrasound. So the ultrasound demonstrates a bilaterally dilated renal tract. So what does this suggest about the etiology? Okay, then I would ask the patient to get a, a urethrogram done. And what may be the cause? Um, Antigrade or retrograde. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's the end of the station. Okay. Um, thank you for your participation. Let me discuss regarding feedback. So okay. let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So this is the... So this is the... Um, Actor briefing, you are Robert John or uh, visiting the Fra uh, from France. You speak minimum English. I mean, it's actor. It's for okay. actor. Okay. So the next slide is, is the examiner briefing. So it's not important for you at least. So the next thing is procedure. So the introduction. So when, when you enter the station, you should wash your hand. This first thing is okay. Walking yeah. to the station with gel, as we are informed that you have already washed your hands, don't worry about washing them again. Start by asking the patient if they are in any pain. So you should ask, do you have any pain? Okay, that's fine. If there is any observation chart available, take a look to ensure they are stable. Okay, mm -hmm. it may be hidden from at that stage. And explain the procedure to the patient and get verbal consent and ask for written consent also. Okay, mm -hmm. that's important for any procedure. So then next preparation. So what you need for preparation, sterile globs, sterile wraps, cleaning solution, cotton swaps, forceps, sterile water, police catheter, syringe, instant gel, urine collection bag. The pack should contain all the necessary items, but check before commencing the procedure. Check expired date. This is the most important thing. So you should check the expired date of anesthetic agent as well as for care. And mm -hmm. retraction. Did you check the retract if the foreskin is retract or not? No, I didn't do that. So you should check that. So if not retracted, you should retract that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So positioning. Positioning is important. Patient should be as flat as possible to perform this procedure. So the next thing is proslings from inner to outer aspect and anterior to posterior, one swipe per swab, and then discard the swab from the sterile field. 
and uh, trap the area with uh, the pen is passing through a pre-made hole in the drip. It's probably easiest to have the catheter coil in the rectangular plastic container found in the packs, which you can place in your sterile field near the patient penis for ease of insertion. Elevate the penis so that it's perpendicular to the patient body and inject instazel into the urethra. Okay, smoothly insert the catheter as far it will go and wait until urine is coming out. Attach the catheter back, inflate the balloon with 10 ml of sterile water, detract the foreskin if present. So when you retract the foreskin, sometimes candidate forget to detract the foreskin. So it's important. Mm. So the next thing is post-procedure. Dry and cover the patient before asking them to redress. Proper positioning and help to redress if needed. Discard washed in appropriate bean. Post-procedural advice. So uh, did you discuss post-procedural advice and warning sign with the patient? I thought it's just about the leaflet. When I give the leaflet, the patient will understand. Yes, that's also okay. And then order appropriate uh, investigation if needed and documentation of procedure and document the amount of color and any event during catheterization and then thanks the patient. Yeah. So the next question is no urine come out when you inserted the catheter, what could be the responsible? The possible cause may include catheter misplacement, post-renal failure, intrinsic renal failure or pre-renal failure. The catheter may not fully in the bladder or it might be in the correct position but blocked. Previous obstruction could have results in post-renal failure. However, you would expect that there would be some urine in the bladder. Pre-renal failure is caused by renal hypoperfusion due to hypovolemia, decreased cardiac output, or efferent glomerular arterial vasoconstriction. Intrinsic renal failure is commonly due to acute tubular necrosis, which is caused by ischemic or nephrotoxin. So what would you like to do first? So the first thing is you should, you should tell, I'd first take a history and thorough examination of the patient, measuring a complete set of observations. So you, as well as if any drugs are available. I would then check the catheter placement by performing a bladder washout and bladder scan. I'd expect at least as much fluid to come back out of the catheter as I inject it in. Well, what is bladder wa washout? So bladder washout means um, it's like uh, irrigation of the bladder. Okay. The bladder is empty on bladder scan and the bladder washout suggests the catheter is in the correct place. What investigation would you order? So the most important investigation is an urgent ultrasound of the patient abdomen looking at the renal tract for a cause of renal failure and the abdomen in general, in case there are any cause such as acute hemorrhage. I'll send a blood test of renal function, full blood count to look for sign of infection or anemia or clotting in case of any abnormal or group and say. The ultrasound demonstrates a bilaterally dilated renal tract. What does suggest about the etiology? The is distal to the ureters, either the bladder or in the urethra, likely to be compressive in nature, for instance, a bladder mask or external compression. And uh, this is the common question, but nowadays uh, um, it's uh, randomly asked, um, uh, like what is catheter, you know that, what is catheter and how they use that. So mm -hmm. what should you do if unable to pass the catheter? Use adequate local anesthesia and gel, consider different size of catheter, Larger size may be easier to insert in BPH, more stiff, easy to push. Just remember this point because it's important. It's randomly asked in the question nowadays. Do ultrasound called urology. And commonest cause of anuria. So just remember the commonest cause is block catheter. Hmm. And these are the other cause. So the first answer should be block catheter. So next question is, Commonest causes of blockage. Why block? Is the jail is the commonest cause to block. Hmm. No urine drain after catheterization. It's the same things. Reevaluate presence of urinary bladder by uh, percussion, the suprapubic region. If you 
have not done this already. Apply suprapubic pressure, aspirate with syringe. Nothing should be introduced until you see urine. Okay, so remember this point. Nothing should be introduced until you see the urine. Okay. Don't inflate. Don't inflate the balloon if you don't see urine. Okay. Mm. If it's still no urine coming out, what should you do? So consider hypovolemia. Check that op chart. You should you should ask that. I I I would like to check the op chart for this patient. So keep fluid challenge. If no hypovolemia from fluid chart, take out the catheter. Okay. Why? It may be false passes, catheter tip in urethral, uh, maybe not in the bladder, uh, not a true palpable bladder, maybe suprabibic mass. So um, so why, why, what is the differential diagnosis? The differential diagnosis, if there is any mass, the blood arrhythmus, catheter, malignancy, pelvic collection, mesentrixis, aortic aneurysm or iliac aneurysm. Um, is the perianal, renal, and postrenal cause? Complication of catheterization, is this important? What, the, what may be the complication? So the commonest complication is first is allergy because latex allergy is the commonest um, uh, for urinary catheterization. And the next is infection, UTI, urethritis, pyelonephritis, and then urethral injury. So this is the, um, some step for urinary catheterization, how to hold the how to wipe, how to uh, retract, as well as how to uh, uh, irrigate and uh, put the gel, as well as, um, you know, water. And this is the checklist uh, for urinary catheterization. So you will check um, against this checklist. So checklist is also important. So Rashmi, do you understand yeah. what I said? So do you understand what points you should improve for mm -hmm. urinary catheterization? So mm -hmm. I'll send you um, everything, written feedback to your email. Okay. So that um, you can have um, from uh, what I discuss. All right. Thank um, you.